What is up guys and in today's tutorial we're going to learn how to make this blob very nice and easy inside of After Effects. So you can see it is kind of almost lava lamp style and it's actually very easy to do. So if we get started now I have my trusted logo here and it's just two shapes if you can see here so you've got this is the shape so I'm just going to rename this actually um, to this is the circle right. Um, now you've got your circle and you've got your shape. So what we're going to do, first you want to go down to Windows and you want to bring up your um, FX and Control, which basically is your control for your uh, properties. And then the next one you want to bring out is your FX and Presets. And that's this box here, right? So what we want to do is, the first thing we want to search for is Turbulence displace you can see here turbulent displace now what we want to do is we want to drag this over our circle not over our shape but over our circle and this is what's going to make the blob I'm just going to move the effects out of the way for a second and move the effects and presets out of the way so you can see already you've got the blob kind of forming and the way to control the blob is very simple so if I bring back my effects I'm just going to leave my effects about here and move my blob there and you can see if I rotate the evolution, you can see it moves and makes this really beautiful blob. Now, all we need to do is animate it. So I've got my timeline here set to 10 seconds. On the first second or zero second, I'm just going to go ahead and set everything to zero and make my evolution and click on the little stopwatch here to set a keyframe. And then I'm going to go to my last second, which is 10 seconds later. And I want this to circle, let's say four times. Right now, if I bring back my, I'm just gonna move the effects out of the way. If I bring back my timeline to zero and just hit play, you can see it's already done the blob section. And that's it. That's as easy as to get started. Now, the next thing we want to do is if you've noticed from our animation, if you see here, you see that the blobs have this kind of connected liquid sort of effect onto them. And the way to do that is. We're just going to deselect everything and we're going to go up to the top here and going to create an ellipse tool. I'm just going to drag a perfect circle. And once we've got the circle, you can see the circle here in the timeline and we're just going to rename this and we're going to name this to smaller circle. I want to drag this between our logo and our circle, right? Now let's just give this some sort of an animation. So we're going to go back to zero seconds and inside the circle uh, here we're just going to hit the letter p on our keyboard which brings up the positions um, attribute going to click on stopwatch we're going to go over to 10 seconds and we're just going to drag this across right now once we've dragged this across while we still have it selected you should see this anchor point here we're going to click on that and we're just going to drag it out a little bit and this is playing around with our bezier tool here and what that basically does, it just creates this sort of a motion that way. So it's kind of a, a really backward inverted S, so to speak. Now, once you have that, you want to select your first keyframe. While holding the shift key, select your second keyframe. Right click it, keyframe assist, and we want easy, easy ease. Or you can press F9 on your keyboard. Now, once we have that, all we now need to do is we need to use the same dis turbulent display effect I'm going to bring that here, same turbulent displace onto our smaller circle. And then you can see we've got the effect there. Now, with this one, I don't want it to have such a dramatic effect, so I'm going to turn the size down a little bit to about 25. So what this basically does is it doesn't um, modify the circle too much from its original shape. Um, and we're going to turn the amount down to about 25 as well, so it has a very subtle movement so if you can see here it barely does anything right in fact i'm just going to push that back up to 50 actually so we can just for the sake of seeing the change on there so once we've done that same thing again we want to set an evolution um, timeline on make sure you're back at zero hit the keyframe go to 10 seconds and this time we want it to only evolute you know, uh, three times, right? So three cycles into that. I'm just going to move the effects out of the way. And if you see here now, 
if I play the animation, you can see that it basically does the same thing we want. It moves in inside the circle and then it moves outside the circle, right? Now, I'm just gonna do one more thing. We want it to change color as soon as it touches the red and then we want it to change back as soon as it touches out of the red, right? And the way to do that is inside our smaller circle attribute, just hit the little arrow down and we want content. We just keep going down until we see the fill and you can see the color here, right? So we're gonna set a stopwatch just before it touches it. So just about there, you can see, you can see it's just about overlapped it. We're gonna hit a timeline on that. And then as soon as it goes inside fully, we want it to have the same color red there, right? So you can see it just modifies the color. And then again, same thing, as soon as it's about to get out, we wanna keep the same red. Now, obviously to do that without changing the attribute, you see this little diamond icon here, just click on that. And that basically sets the same keyframe. And then as soon as it gets out, we want it to go back to the original color. So what we can do, if unless you remember the color hex code, we can just go back, copy the original keyframe. So we can just control C and then control V and it pastes it there. So that we have the same kind of color effect back there. So again, I'm gonna select them all, right click it, keyframe assist, easy ease, right? That's it. So now we've just got one more thing to do, which is basically to make the blob connect. Right? You can see right now they just seem to overlap, whereas on our one, they seem to have this kind of connected look. And the way to do that is we want to create a new layer. So we right click the space here, new adjustment layer. And then we want to again move the adjustment layer just below the shape because we don't want the shape to be affected. And inside the adjustment layer, we're going to bring back our uh, effects and presets here. And this time we are going to search for fast box blur, which is this one here. And we're gonna drag that over our adjustment layer, let go. And then we're gonna do one more search, which is called the choker or the choker, I should say. Um, and we want this simple choker and we wanna drag that across to our adjustment layer as well. And that's it, we're done with the effects and presets. I'm just gonna move that out of the way and I'm gonna bring back my effects control. Now you can see here, we've got the two um, effects on there. We're just gonna turn off the simple choker for now and just go through the properties for the fast blur, uh, the fast box blur effect. Now what we wanna do with this is we want the iterations um, to about, we'll leave it three for now, but we want the blur to be a lot more. So we wanna blur the items. You can see in the background, it's blurring everything, right? So let's say about, I'd say about 20 for now. We'll change it a little later if we need to. And then if we turn on our simple choker now and then go into the properties for that, you can see the choke mat here and we want to just up that to about, I don't know, 75, right? And you can see here already what it's done. It started to connect the shapes in. Now, I'm not sure I quite like the way that this looks. I'm just gonna go back to our box blur just so it has a nice softer blurs. So let's say about 25, we reduce our iterations to about one, I'd say. And then we're gonna move the effects out of the way. And then you can see here, now we have a nice little connect. And as soon as it connects in, it changes into its red color. And the moment it comes out, it changes into the beige color again. Now, if you feel like this circle is too small, it's very simple, just go back into your circle shape. And when you have the transform tool, just increase your size, right? Just increase the size. Well, you can hold the shift key so that it increases it from all angles. Otherwise, um, you can pretty much create, create a, uh, a ununiformed un circle. So once we've done that, you can see it now, it's a little bit more visual in terms of the shape and if I hit give that a quick render, beautiful, right? So yeah, that's it. If you've enjoyed this, please make sure that you do like the post. I'm Cali from Perspective, and I'll see you next time.